I believe we are officially live. So, uh, everyone, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to hopefully do a little mic check, mic check. Um, make sure you can hear us if you if you can or you can't comment below and give us some some thumbs up and uh, and hearts on Facebook. Um, you guys, I have Lou Catalano here with us today. Lou is one of my uh, trusted advisors. He's my CPA and uh, and he just brings you know a ton of, uh, of value and knowledge to me personally. So he's been so gracious to uh, to share that information with everybody in my, else in my tribe. So thank you guys for watching. I see Renee is here. Hey, also, Renee. also another uh, favorite of, of Lou's, but I wanted to kick off with something different today before I get into introducing Lou a little bit more and uh, and and jumping into the meat of, uh, of this q and I wanted to share something fun. So for the last year or so, I've been a subscriber of this. This is the good newspaper. One, one paper goes out every quarter and it's basically all good news. So they, all, they have an online presence as well. They're good, good co uh, on like Instagram or Facebook, but uh, good news. So in a time where, you know, there's not always good news, at least you can go to one source and get some good stuff. Thanks for sharing, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm going to buy that uh, for uh, gifts for everybody for Christmas this year. Yeah. yeah, it's a good call. Honestly, I would say uh, maybe even maybe I know some people are celebrating like Thanksgiving now. Uh, maybe you know maybe move Christmas gifts to like. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> so, my uh, my wife is doing with uh, with my daughter. My son's too young, but they're doing we're doing a a gratitude tree. So they went out and like got sticks, and then she cut out some uh, some like little paper leaves with her cricket thing it's called. And so every day, you know, you write one thing you're grateful for and you hang it on. So you make like this big tree just of all the things you're grateful for, which, you know, right now we're <laughs> breathing down each other's necks up here at home. So it's a, uh, it's a cool thing. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm, we're, we're doing that. We're, we're taking that idea and running with it for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Love it. Cool. So, um, you know, uh, I want to introduce everybody to you. So Lou Catalano, you're a uh, MUN CPAs, right? Yep. Um, yeah. And so you're you're here, you're local, you're in Roseville, but you have office, the MUN has offices throughout the the state. And I think there's one in Hawaii. And there's right. one. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. We've got offices kind of up and down uh, California, the, the uh, centrally located here, kind of in Northern California. I'm in the Roseville office myself. Uh, we work with small and mid-sized businesses and, and individuals kind of in our community and, you know, really nationwide, but very much concentrated in our community. We've got an office down south up in uh, South Lake Tahoe. And, yeah, we uh, we merged with a firm over in Hawaii about a year and a half ago. And uh, we've been we, we've been over there for a lot longer, but now we have a physical presence over there as well. Personally, I went to school, uh, University of Hawaii, so I got a little bit of roots over there as well. But, um, yeah, we're kinda, you know, we're still on the small side of a firm. Um, but we've got we're big enough where we've got, you know we've got a little bit more research resources than uh, than some of the other people out there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so you know for for today I have a few questions that I want to bring up. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to apply to individuals and to small businesses. Perfect. And which basically, that's that's your clientele, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you got to file a tax return, we can probably help you out. We primarily work with small and mid-sized businesses and then all their owners, um, but we've got plenty of. Uh, uh, plenty of individuals we do do stuff for as well. And there's stuff, you know, going on with the coronavirus and um, some of the acts that the president just signed and things like that. And there's huge impacts for individuals, huge impacts for businesses. You know, we're really still unpacking a lot of it. I mean, the president just signed the most recent act, the CARES Act on Friday uh, at, in, the, in the afternoon. <clears throat> so we spent a good chunk of the weekend kind of piecing that together. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we're, <clears throat> we're uncovering as much as we can as we go. So I figured this would be, it, it's fresh, right? Like everything has just happened, like you said, just like a, a day ago, right? <laughs> One yeah, day ago. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, I don't even know exactly what to ask, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I, I guess, I guess what I want to know is like, what are the, what are some of the, the biggest questions that you're getting right now from your clients? 
Yeah, ab- absolutely. Well, I think I'll, I'll kind of divide it, you know, same way into kind of two two camps, individuals and, and, uh, and small business owners. And, um, you know, I think everybody's just kind of worried about the economy right now. We're looking at, at um, you know, there's a big slowdown. People are not home, not out spending money. They're at home. Um, we have certainly a number of individuals who are working on reduced hours or reduced pay or unfortunately are being laid off or, or looking at, you know, possibly being laid off um, here, you know, in the near future. We certainly hope that doesn't happen. We hope things bounce back really quickly. But the reality is people are already doing it. You know, the unemployment numbers came out last week. And, uh, you know, we were at somewhere around 3.4 million new jobless claims last week, set a record. The previous record set in 1982 uh, was like 600,000 in a week. And I think that really is just a really that's more of an indicator of just how quickly everything has happened. It's just, you know, everything hit a brick wall with being, you know, with everybody being told to stay at home, essentially, versus, you know, they're in a recession or something like that. There's a kind of, you know, a slow, slow down over time. The whole being we're going to bounce back just as quickly. You know, that, that remains to be seen. But um, but I think, you know, what's immediately impacting my clients right now, um, first and foremost, is, uh, you know, the, the tax filing deadlines have been extended. So right now for businesses and individuals, you have an automatic extension federally and the state of California complies with this. Um, so you don't need to file or pay if you owe pay, if you owe taxes, you don't need to file or pay until July 15th. Um, for a lot of people, if you've got a refund coming, Hey man, get that return done anyway. Um, there's no reason to wait. We're still working, you know, pretty much full speed ahead, getting, getting people's returns done just like it is a normal tax season. But the reality is we do have that extended, that extended period of time that also applies to estimates. If you're a quarterly estimate payer, um, your April 15th estimate is, is postponed until July 15th as well. So really they're just trying to keep cash in people's pockets. If you owe money, there's a penalty, penalty free and interest free, basically extension on that until uh, July 15th. Typically, you know, you can always extend in April and that extension for an individual goes until October. Typically um, <clears throat> that's an extension to pay uh, to file, but not an extension to pay. So you still right. you are accruing interest and penalties immediately on April 16th, but here, um, you know, it is also an extension to pay. So, you know, that's immediate benefit. Um, and then, you know, president Trump signed the cares, the cares act into law on Friday, the Senate and the house spent last week kind of negotiating that. Um, probably one of the biggest provisions that most um, most of the people watching this uh, you know heard about are the stimulus checks that are going to be coming out. Um, just you know, bottom line, basically, we're looking at twelve hundred dollars per individual. Um, if your AGI is up to seventy five thousand um, dollars, so twenty four hundred dollars per couple. AGI limit there is one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and five hundred dollars for each additional child if you're not phased out. Um, you know, if, if we're talking about actionable takeaways. I think one of the keys here is um, is that it's based off of the last filed tax return. So if you filed 2019, then they're going to look at your 2019 taxes. If you haven't filed 2019 yet and you think you're on the bubble, you're either near that 170 or near that 75 or near that 150, and you haven't filed 19, what we're going to want to do is let's look at 18, see where your AGI is there. And then let's look at where we think it's going to be for 19. If you're over in 18 and you think you're going to be under 19, then we want to get that 19 return filed ASAP so you qualify for the check. Hmm. Similarly, if you were under an 18 but you're going to be over in 19, let's sit tight on that 19 return as long as we can. So until July 15th, and actually we can even extend, you know, beyond that using the normal extension until October. So that hopefully they, they, they pick you up, process the check, and cut those checks out to you. So basically we're going to have, you know, a couple of a couple, a little bit of a planning opportunity there. If you're way over, you know, uh, sorry, that, that's going to be tough. If you're way under, um, you know, then then you don't need to worry about it either way. But that's definitely a consideration. And, you know, for a family of four that you're talking about thirty four hundred dollars, you know, that is coming. So that's not insignificant, uh, insignificant money that's that's going to be coming out. Checks are supposedly rolling out within the next two weeks. There's a lot of talk in the professional practitioner community about how realistic it is that the IRS can actually implement that quickly. Um, I'll tell you, you know, as, as an IRS practitioner, we have our own priority phone line and we got notification that they shut it down because they don't have enough people to even man that right now. So I don't know how they're going to print and, you know, send out 200 million checks, but you know, we'll, we'll see. So, um, yeah. so hopefully that, that's going to be cruising along as, as, as quickly as possible. Okay. So about if they cut a check, so if you're over 150. Yeah. Or if you were under 150 in 2018. Yep. 
and maybe you might be over 150 for 2019 mm -hmm. and you sit tight and they cut you a check. Yeah. Do you, is there, do you think there's, I mean, is there going to be a penalty? Or that's like, a good question. Yeah. Do you have to pay it back basically? Yeah. Or, or are you going to get penalized or something like that? There's no language in the law right now to indicate um, that you would be required to pay it back. And in fact, what's going to happen on your 2020 return is we're going to recalculate it to see if you were entitled to it in 2020. If we see if you're entitled to it based on your 2020 results, um, mm -hmm. if you are entitled to it and you didn't get it because you had exceeded in 18 and 19, 18 or 19, um, then it'll, then you'll get it in the form of a tax credit. I believe it'll be a refundable tax credit. Um, the, the conversation right now is that there's nothing in there to say you're going to have to repay it. Um, I don't believe in the final bill, they specify specifically whether or not it's going to need to be repaid. But, um, but our, our understanding right now is it's not. Cool. So yeah. get it. So get it. Basically, you've got 18, 19, or 20. If you haven't filed 19 yet, you've got three tax years to qualify for this thing. So do the best you can to qualify. And I did want to note, uh, you know, make a note. Um, there is no phase out. So once you hit the number, you're either in or you're out. It's kind of a, a in or out. So, you know, if you made $75,001, you're out, which is diff different than a lot of the other tax provisions where there's generally, you know, a phase out of, you know, five cents on the dollar or something like that. Um, also, though, it's important to keep in mind your AGI is not your income. You could have a salary of whatever, $175,000 a year and still be under the threshold. Um, there, are, there are deductions against uh, uh, deductions against your total income to arrive at your what's called your adjusted gross income. That's why it's called adjusted gross income. Um, so, you know, the biggies would be, you know, part of your self-employment tax, student loan interest deduction, HSA, IRA. There's, there's, a, there's a number of them that go into it. If you're employed, your contributions to your health, uh, your, uh, your health care, as well as your 401k, those are off the top of my head, but those are the biggies. Yeah. Um, they're going to reduce your income. So really look at your tax return and see what your AGI is, not just, you know, oh, my salary is this, my spouse's salary is that, we're over. You may or may not be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I think that actually answers uh, one of the questions that we had is, is, oh. is it all or nothing? You know, what, what yeah. if it's north of 150? Yeah I, believe, yeah, I believe it is, unfortunately, all or nothing. But uh, but again, you've got multiple multiple years and an AGI is not is not total income. Yeah. Um, uh, so, okay. So that was a lot. <laughs> I think, <laughs> my, <laughs> no, that's perfect. That's perfect. My, it all, this all started with like, what are the biggest questions? And that's obviously the biggest one from individuals is like, yeah. where, where, where's the stimulus check? Oh, yeah. how, what do you have to do in order to, to get the check? Nothing. So how it's working is the IRS is looking at your last tax return automatically. Um, and they will be calculating it and sending it to you if you qualify or, you know, whether if you qualify, if you don't, then you won't, not. maybe they'll send you a letter that says we looked and you didn't, don't qualify. So again, that's where if 18 has been filed, they're going to look at 18. If 19 has been filed, they're going to look at 19 in 20. We're going to go back and recalculate it as your preparer, or you'll do it as uh, on your own um, to, to determine whether you get it or not. Um, okay. Though, if you are signed up for direct deposit already, like you've, you've had a refund in the past that has been direct deposited in your bank, they're going to send it to that bank account. Um, if not, they'll mail it to the last address on file. So, you know, for someone like myself who just moved into a new house that the Goldsby Group uh, sold me <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I I think that was not prompted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, guys, I'd be sitting at my kitchen table, not in this very bleak and blank unfinished room <laughs> but um um otherwise they'll mail it to the address on file so if if uh if you've moved recently since your last tax return was filed you'll want to go ahead and submit a change of address form to the irs um again quite I, I have some questions about how quickly they're going to process those with everything else going on right now but i think it's still worth it to do it um you know otherwise hopefully you got mail forwarding in place or things like that and like I said, the checks are supposed to start rolling out in the next couple of weeks, but could conceivably, um, you know, take through the rest of the year. So it could it could be a, a while. Okay, that's actually a that's um, an amazing point. Thank you for that. And yeah. Laura, I know is watching. Uh, we should definitely reach out to all of our clients right now that aren't watching this and uh, and let them know. Hey, get that change of address filed ASAP. 
if you just yeah, I apologize. I don't know. I don't recall the form name uh, number off the top of my head, but it's a pretty pretty simple form. You you can shoot it off to them and, and get that updated so that you make sure that stimulus check is coming to the right place. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, and and just to you know, occasionally you'll have individuals, particularly older people who are maybe just collecting social security or something like that. For some reason, you don't have a tax return filing requirement. Um, if they're sending you a social security check or something like that, that'll be enough data in the system for you to get the check. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I would personally, probably what I would do, even if you don't have a filing requirement because your income is low enough, uh, for whatever reasons, I would probably just go ahead and file a return to get in the system just with zero, you know, it's basically zero activity or certainly zero tax due, um, to get in the system. So that's probably not affecting a whole lot of people on, on our, on our, uh, Facebook live here today, but it is something to consider. Sure. Or yeah. And if you know, yeah. If you, or somebody that knows somebody, right. That doesn't. Sure. Basically. Yeah. Grandma or something like that. You know, if you're just social security and other form of non-taxable income, something like that, it could, you know, that could happen. So, you know, we want to make sure that everybody's in line to get those checks, you know, with the least amount of friction possible. Okay. Um, all right. So I think we've covered, I mean, that that's gold, man. Like whoever's watching, I think there's a lot of uncertainty or just like what, we, maybe people have heard about the fact that they're getting checks, but not sure what to do with that information. So yeah. uh, I think that's that's awesome. Let's let's shift over because I know people are watching our our small business owners as yeah. well. <clears throat> um, and I, this is kind of a big question, but just like what what do small as a business owner, what do we need to be aware of or doing right now? There's a lot. Um, you know, there there are a lot of a lot of things going on. Um, they, um, they, this CARES Act that was signed on Friday is the third kind of installment in the government trying to provide some relief for, for everything that's going on. Um, prob definitely the most, the biggest, the most powerful, it's $2.2 .2 trillion. I mean, it's just a massive sum of money and probably the most, there, there's a number of provisions in that. Probably the most significant permit provision is something called the payroll protection program loans. What these are are loans for small businesses administered by the SBA, the Small Business Small Business Administration. They're going to run through banks just like a normal SBA loan will uh, would, um, but they're specific in this program. And what they offer is basically, if if you're a business that can show that you are facing economic un uncertainty as a result of what's going on with COVID nineteen. I, I don't have a client who that's not true for, frankly. I mean, uh, that's 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 very for whatever reasons, but um, you know, if you uh, if you manufacture masks right now, you're probably doing okay. But um, you know, there's a lot. Of, even then, how are you going to get it transported and, and this and that? So everybody's facing some economic uncertainty. So um, again, this bill was signed Friday, so there's a lot of stuff we don't know about how it's administered. But the highlights of it are are basically. Uh, you will be eligible for a loan that is equal to two and a half times your average month's payroll for the last 12 months. There are some adjustments if you're a highly seasonal business and things like that, or if you're a new business, but basically two and a half months worth of payroll is the amount of loan you'll be eligible for. But in the ensuing eight weeks after you receive that loan, if you spend those the proceeds of that loan on uh, qualified expenses, which is payroll, rent, utilities, um, interest on mandatory debt service, some of those sort of things. In the eight weeks after the loan is distributed, um, if you spend on those things and you maintain your payroll, uh, meaning you keep your people employed, uh, the loan will be forgiven. So essentially it's a grant. They're calling it a loan and then you gotta jump through some hoops to get it forgiven. But essentially the government's gonna, functionally it comes down to the government's gonna kind of fund the business to be open for for about two months. So buying people time through, you know, April and May. So by June, you know, it's gonna take a little while for the SBA to figure out how to actually administer this thing. Hmm. So that's huge. I mean, it's also huge, you know, we, we were just talking about individuals, but you know, I, we've got a number of people who are either, you know, been laid out, let go or uh, furloughed or just looking at reduced hours. Well, what this program does is it incentivizes your employer to bring you back and pay you your salary because the forgiveness of this loan is contingent in part on paying the same amount of salary in payroll, number of employees and dollar amount close to the same amount as you were paying pretty much in the same period, uh, you know, in 2019. So, so in, in last year as an employer, it's huge because now, you know, 
I, I work with a lot of restaurants and breweries and people in the in the service industry as well as you know a lot of other businesses. But those industries right now have been hit some of the hardest. Yeah. And, uh, this is really giving you a you know a two month lifeline to, to be able to pay your people to pay your to pay your uh, you know keep keep the lights on and keep the door <laughs> well the doors open uh, nobody's doors are really open right now other than you know some to go and stuff like that but um, so that's the that's the biggest that's the most exciting piece of the puzzle um, we're hosting a webinar tomorrow to talk about that in a little more detail um, but that's kind of the stuff that's that's really powerful for businesses there are some other credits and things like that. Um, but for our small business owners, we're pushing everybody. If you've got a relationship with a banker, with SBA uh, banker, they can do that. They're called SBA 7A loans. Get in line. They don't know how to administer them yet. The SBA has promised some additional guidance today. Um, and then, you know, <clears throat> how long it takes to actually start getting these things going is, is we're not sure. But it's going to be quick because, you know, there are people who have got bills to pay now. And, you know, right business has been down for a little while. So the, the, these are going to get funded pretty quickly. There are other programs as well. That's probably the most exciting, the most powerful one that we're seeing right now. It is. Yeah. So I emailed my one of, you know, the my the banker and yeah. um, and I asked about it and he said, hey, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. And I was like anxious, you know, and I mean, I've been, only been anxious for like four days, basically. But yeah, <clears throat> and I had to kind of calm down for a second because I'm like, you know, I mostly because I want to know more information about it so that I could help other people. Right. That's why I want to yeah, share it. Absolutely. Um, and uh, and but I ha I kind of had to calm down a little bit because I'd imagine that given the nature of this program, there's going mm -hmm. to be a way to get a hold of it eventually. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, the whole idea is let's get this in. Let's get it out to the people soon. And, you know, it's really the idea is it's going to trickle down. It's going to flow straight from the banks to small businesses. And a big portion of it is you got to pay your people. And then also you got to pay your rent. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of these buildings are also owned by small business owners who own a couple pieces of real estate or, you know, sometimes more. But um, so, you know, hopefully those funds are, you know, filtering into the people that that, that need them. And, you know, all, certainly all their employees now are going to be able to cover their rents, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully um, that's how it works. It is going to take some time just to put, kind of put it in perspective. Some numbers I got from a banker, I haven't vetted these, but I, it was from a reliable source. Um, the SBA program in 2019 funded, I want to say it was between 25 and $30 billion dollars in loans, just normal small business loans. Hey, I want to open a you know coffee shop. I'm going to go go get 200 grand from the bank to do it. It's SBA loans. This program is uh, um, is like shoot. Now I'm going to mess up the number, but I, it's like 10 times this this okay. program is 10 times what they did last year. So, and you can imagine it's all going through this funnel of of um, you know a couple of weeks. I mean, everybody wants the, the loan this week, right? So you've got. 10 times the volume of dollars trying to flow through in one week, what went through in a year last year. So I think that absolutely um, presents some challenges to the banks that are administering it, to the SBA that is overseeing it and actually providing the funds. Um, but it also means that they're going to figure out how to just kind of crank these things through because they're going to have to. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I wonder about timing is, does that mean they're going like, if you applied today, does, mm -hmm. Does it start from the day? I mean, if it doesn't fund for another three weeks, does it roll back to today, basically? So the forgiveness calculation, which is really the key piece of it, right, is uh, is basically you need to spend on qualifying expenses in the eight weeks following the loan approval. So I don't think, honestly, I don't think it's going to be three weeks. I mean, the, the language in the bill had, I want to say it was one or two days to fund these oh, things. Wow. Now, realistically, is a bank going to be able to do that to just get everything through, especially at this volume? Certainly not in the beginning. Maybe they'll figure it out and get there. Yeah. Um, there are some other programs that can provide some bridge funding if, if you, you know, a business is really tight. What a lot of my clients had been doing for the previous two weeks is, is applying for something called an SBA disaster loan. Unrelated to the, the payroll protection program, um, this has been around for a while. I mean, disaster loans have existed, you know, for hurricanes and things like that. And, and this qualified because it was a, a federally declared disaster zone. One of the things that this new, um, the new act did do, however, is that if you're in line for one of those SBA disaster loans, you can be eligible for a grant up to $10,000 to kind of pre-fund that loan so that you can get some cash to keep the business up and running. Um, and if for some reason you applied 
got the grant and then didn't get approved for the disaster loan for one reason or another, that grant does not have to be repaid. So, you know, you're safe in that you can take the money and not all of a sudden have a call and say, well, you, you got denied, give us our money back. Um, so, you know, there's other stuff out there um, and, and, and it's been made a little bit easier to, uh, to access. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is, it's good, man. It's good stuff. It's a lot. Um, what, then as a as a business do what do you need to do you need to contact your banker so if you've got a relationship with a banker um get in touch with them tell them i want to do an sba 7a under the payroll protection program uh if your bank doesn't do sba 7a you don't have a relationship with somebody reach out to a trusted advisor call jeff call myself um call somebody who uh, who you, you trust um, to, to get in touch there, there, you know, I, we know the good banks that, that can do these things well, and we know that they're going to turn them around quickly. Um, so you need to get in touch with them. You know, there's an application process like anything else. Um, of course, the good news is with, with these particular loans, uh, you don't have to have put up a personal guarantee. Anybody, you know, who's listening right now, who's got an SBA loan knows, I mean, they, you assign everything to them. They got your house, they got your, you know, they, they get it all. In this case, there's no guarantees. Um, and, and the, the loans can be really, really be funded on, um, on like credit score alone, or they can use other determining factors. So I, it seems like people are going to be able to qualify for these, um, pretty easily. And, uh, and you're, you know, you're not putting up the house to, to pay your rent at your, for your business, which is, which is nice. The government's backing it. If for some reason, a portion of the loan wasn't forgiven, you know, you weren't able to bring your payroll rolls up back to what they need to be, or you had to use it for an expense that wasn't one of the qualifying expenses, something like that. The loan uh, converts to a term loan. So it's a 10 year term, not to exceed 4% interest. So not terrible financing terms anyway. Yeah. Obviously we're pushing everybody. You need to, we need to do the right things to make sure that this thing gets forgiven. And part of the service we're providing for, for our clients and for others that are getting referred to us right now is walking them through that application process to make sure they're getting the most they can, because it's not as simple as just saying, well, here's what I paid in payroll. There are some accruals that you can do. There are some, some questions around, you know, what do I do with tips and things like that. So there's still some analysis to be done on the front end. And then certainly the compliance on the back end to make sure that you're spending the money in the right places and can document that, you used, you spent the money for qualifying purposes and also that your payroll roles were where they needed to be. Um, I know we have one of the questions that I get a lot. Um, we've got a number of clients, like I said, who have already had to lay people off, whether they're a restaurant, you know, a lot of our dentists, the, the, uh, the ADA came out, uh, I want to say a week, maybe it was two weeks ago. Now it's hard to keep track, you know, and said, Hey, shut your doors other than for emergency. So, you know, hygienists were generally let go because there was just no work for them. Um, there's some safe harbor provisions built into the act that if you get your payroll back up by June 30th, um, you're still going to be able to qualify. We don't know the specifics of how that's going to get administered. So I can't advise exactly on that yet, unfortunately, but we do know it's there. So, um, you know, I, I don't have a single really client that we're not advising to go for this, maybe a couple, but you know, in general, let's, let's, let's go get this. This is out here to keep businesses afloat for the next couple of months while consumer spending is, is really cut off. So what is that? What would that consult like for me? Yeah. <laughs> what does that consultation look like? I mean, <laughs> uh, no, yeah. Um, how, what, I mean, what does that look like? I know, you know, you and I, we do like a tax prep, like at the end of the year, there's usually a meeting with, with, yeah, we do tax planning. Yeah, absolutely tax planning and then, you know, towards now basically, which is crazy. I can't even wrap my head around the idea that I have this much of your time right now on, uh, you well, know, March 30th. This is important um, stuff, man. This is, we've, we've shifted a lot of our energy here. You know, the tax deadlines have been extended. We're still pushing as hard as we can to get done what we can, but you know, some clients are very happy to just sit tight because they have bigger fish to fry. And we do too right now, uh, you know, educating the community, uh, is, is more important for us and, and making sure that we're helping our clients through this this very, you know, uncharted waters in terms of economic times is higher priority than making sure we're in compliance. We've done the tax planning. We did that, you know, in September, October, November. So we know where you're going to stand, where your tax situation is. And we've already, we've dealt with that. Filing the forms is whatever. This is what's important today for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So, cool. yeah, so in terms of what the process would look like, you know, yeah. to help somebody through this, it would really be let's sit down, let's let's take a look at your books, make sure your accounting is current, which 
let's be honest, a lot of times it's not for, for, for some of our small businesses. And then we're gonna grab your payroll records and that's gonna be the starting point. Um, I think what's important to, to note from there is it's not just what did you pay out in payroll for you know the average month for the last year. We also need to include 401k accruals, health insurance benefits. Um, sometimes there's an allowance for severance packages that can be built in. Um, there's some, we're analyzing whether there's a component of cash tips that you're actually going to get to include because if you've got employees that you know are receiving cash tips those are gone because there's nobody walking to the store are you able to borrow more money and then give that to your employees to offset some of the cash tips that they're used to uh that they're used to receiving and, and i think the answer to that is yes but we're, we're looking into it there's some language in there that certainly indicates cash tips but we don't know how that calculation works so that's where it's a little more complicated than i don't know i'll just send my lender you know my 941. Um, it is a little more complicated. And then again, I think the ongoing monitoring, once those funds are received to make sure you're in compliance. So this thing does get converted to uh, a grant. Basically the debt is forgiven and there's no taxable event happening. You're not going to get pick up the income tax on it uh, when it's forgiven by the government. Um, those are the areas where we really want to step in. We need to step in and we are stepping in. And so the first step of action in terms of a business owner to literally just reach out to you or reach out to their CPA or whatever and say, hey, this is what we need to we need to do this. Call your CPA. Make sure, hey, I need to get my, my books in order. We need to be ready. I want to be in line for this. Get in touch with your banker um, or find a banker if you don't have one to, to get in line. Absolutely. <clears throat> and awesome. there, there's a little bit of a, we're not totally sure, but uh, we're figuring it out as quickly as we can. Yeah. Yeah, makes makes sense. So uh, I told you we'd probably go for about a half hour. We're almost there. Um, I know you're going to be covering you and, and other members from your firm are going to be covering this, uh, this a lot of this stuff or and even more of it tomorrow yeah. at the mm -hmm. webinar. Right. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow uh, we're, we're hosting a webinar. You can go to our website down below there. MunCPAs.com. Um, you can click click through the uh, COVID-19 resources and, and you've got a link uh, to the webinar. And uh, yeah, I'd be more than happy to, to host uh, anybody who wants to come check that out. Uh, it's going to be myself talking about the kind of the tax and accounting side of it. A lot of what we just talked about here, but definitely uh, more in depth to the level we can. Also have a, a banker who's an expert in SBA lending. Um, actually, two of them, they're going to be on to kind of go through what they know about the process so far, um, not only with this, but also with SBA disaster loans and some of the other things. Um, there's also a program if you have an existing SBA loan to have your basically your payments covered for the next six months. So that's huge for, for a lot of small businesses uh, that have an SBA loan out to, to take that cash flow off your plate and then also get some of this additional funding. Again, really going to help you stay stay afloat. I also have an HR expert who's uh, who's joining us tomorrow, and she's going to talk about a little bit about some of this stuff because there's certainly a lot of hiring issues, particularly surrounding laying people off versus furloughing them versus you know do I retain them? Do we pay out PTO? And then bring, bringing people people back for you know compliance with CARES. Prior to the CARES Act, you know, all the way a whole, you know, 10 days ago, a different act was, was enacted called the Family First Corona Response Act or something like that, um, but the Family First Act. And that dealt with a requirement to offer paid time off, paid leave for Corona-related reasons, for illness of yourself or a family member. Also, it expanded family, uh, FMLA, family medical leave, um, to include taking care of children. As you know, as I know, school's closed, the kids are home, so are we. Yeah. Um, we're able to work from home, so we don't qualify, but if you were in a business where you had to be home to take care of your child and you're not able to work from home, your employer you know, has to provide some, some coverage there. Flip side, as the employer, you have to provide that coverage, but there are mechanisms where the federal government's really funding that through um, some advanced payroll tax credits, reduction in your tax liabilities, deposit liabilities, et cetera. So we'll have a HR person on talking about that as as well. So lots of moving pieces. Um, you know, definitely come come check it out. Reach out if you have specific questions. We're happy to go over. Uh, we're happy to go over that stuff. Um, if uh, okay, yeah. So check out the website, you guys. This this video is going to stay up. Lou, there's a couple of extra questions. Maybe we can maybe we can just jump in and uh, yeah. we'll back some of these questions after the the live stream's over. Sure. Uh, and uh and yeah so the best way to get in touch with you and and to and to see the webinars to go to your website right monthcpas.com yep. yep. have your email scrolling across here too so you might get you know uh that's fine all right 
Yeah, I'll check my email. I probably already have a couple. Yeah, yeah, it's lpc at moncpas.com. Um, yeah, more than happy, you know, to kind of help out, help help guide people through. Um, you know, I appreciate Jeff. Uh, you invited me to be a part of this, part of the tribe. I mean, I think definitely in times like this, it's uh, just super important for all of us to kind of lean in with the skills uh, and resources we have to be able to help others in the community. And so that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get out in front, make sure people are educated. You know, I've seen plenty of misinformation being spread around too. So we're trying to trying to be in, out in front of that, staying in our lane with, you know, I know the accounting stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what to do health wise, but um, staying in our lane with, with the, uh, <clears throat> with the tax and accounting stuff, making sure people are, are making the right moves that they can make. And, and, uh, and this stuff is being, uh, being handled as quickly as possible. Well, I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I'm, I think I got lucky and I caught you early. I'm assuming you're going to have several other people that want, want your advice now as well, but <laughs> We're I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be logging into the webinar tomorrow, man. Awesome, Thank man. you. Hey. Yeah, appreciate it. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, reach out. And that'll be recorded and available, I think, on our website. We're working that out. We do have a cap on, on the number of people that can join, and we may be approaching it. So we're looking at either expanding it or we may just, you know, rebroadcast. So, uh, but definitely, yeah, log into our website. It'll, it'll shoot you over to an Eventbrite invite. Um, you know, put your info in, and, and we'll get you on our list and, and uh, be more than happy to have people people join. The, the thrust of that is really going to be business-driven. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, – um, the tax credits, but or the stimulus checks, excuse me. But you know, I think we, we covered that. Um, and if anyone has specific questions about those, um, you know, definitely reach out. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Of course.